verse. Please come forward and fill in the first rows first. Thank you. Allah Akbar Rashad 
Iyak wal bid'ah Fa innal bid'ata tahdi ila al-ma'siyah Wa man ya'si allaha wa rasulahu faqad dhalla wa ghawa Wa alaykum bil ihsan Fa inna allaha yuhibbu al-muhsinin Qala Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ولا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم عن سفيان ابن عبد الله الثقفي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم رواه مسلم ونسي Respected brothers and sisters in Islam We are continuing our understanding of an-nafs in the whole Quran which is very powerful internal motivating force and we have gone through in the previous khutbahs many Islamic terms as explained by Imam Abu Hamid Al Ghazali we have gone through many verses of the Holy Quran and we have tried our best to educate ourselves about the difference of only in words and not in the actions between at-tasawwuf al-islami or tazkiyatun nufus Tasawwuf al-Islami or Islamic Sufism started 200 years after the Prophet and Tazkiyatun Nufus with the same meaning was the part of the functions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as mentioned repeatedly in the Holy Quran and we spoke about last time Referring to al-bid'ah al-hasana and al-bid'ah al-sayyi'ah. There is a good innovation like Taraweeh prayer. A good innovation has basis in the actions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we went into the details giving you all the examples. But Sufism, when we take it as al bidah as sayyiah an innovation which has no connection with the functions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know that through the doors of Sufism, Lots of evil entered Islam. And that evil has no connection. And that is in reality a bidah. Which one has to keep away from it. What is that? When it comes to non-Muslims, they do the zikr as Muslims do. 
but only that aspect of uh, Sufism they adopt. About 25 years ago, I was coming once to a San Francisco through 280. And on my way near 19th Street, I think, I saw a huge building. The name of that building was, with bold letter, it was outside saying Islam Temple. I was shocked to see the word Islam and with it, with it the temple. So I called the building and I asked them, what is this? So they say, oh, we have nothing to do with Islam. We believe in amalgamation of religion and we take certain things from all the religion and we get together and we practice it. So from Islamic Sufism we have taken the zikr, remembrance of God Almighty and we do that. If you go to many Sufi orders, you will find some of them allow themselves to go as far as listening to the music and when they are intoxicated according to their own description with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they start dancing. There are among the Sufi orders those who go to the graves of the people and they make dua to those holy people who were buried in those graves. And the Quran is very clear. They don't even hear you. And if he, they were to hear you, they cannot do anything because the source of everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in order to differentiate between the tazkiyat nufus the purification of internal self of the humankind, which was performed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa throughout his life, and the new term Sufism, which was 200 years after the Prophet, we need to first investigate and find in those actions and in those words of those individuals are they following the basic principles and foundations of Islam. For example, all the Islamic scholars agree upon this reality that anyone who does not follow Sharia according to the system upon which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did the purification of heart, they will not be considered as true believers. And why do they say that? They say that because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ash-Shari'ah and Ash-Shari'ah when we say Ash-Shari'ah that is the Islamic comprehensive legal system which includes the Islamic jurisprudence and all the methods of performing our duties and responsibilities towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said a sharia is my words. Those were given. Like Quran says in Surah to Shura, Surah number 42, verse 13. Shara'a lakum min ad-deeni 
ma wasa bihi nuha and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the five greatest prophets and messengers in that verse noah abraham moses jesus and muhammad may choices blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon them so without sharia there is no sufism and if you sufism Practices Sharia it is practicing what was taught by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he said, "At-tariqa is my action." See, in simple words, a Sharia is the application of the divine system on our external aspects of life. on our confessions if somebody says la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah upon declaration of that article of faith that person will be considered a muslim see but at-tariqah is the internal aspect <laughs> internal aspect means not only Like the Quran says in verse number twenty, surah number six, surah Al-An'am, "Wazaru zahir al-ism wa batina." You have to give up, you know, external sins and internal sins both, in order to enjoy the kind of spirituality which was conveyed in words. actions by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that is the internal aspect what is the internal aspect internal aspect means the compassion and love of islam taking into consideration one universal god your love has to be strongest for allah one universal humanity your love has to be by knowing about each other not only limited to the believers to the entire human kind as mentioned in surah number 49 verse 13 lita'arafu then only you will be able to achieve and attain the peaceful coexistence and you will attain the good pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that internal spirituality was conveyed and it came through the hearts of the people you know through from sayyidina prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and that silsila chain of the people who connect themselves with that process of tazkiyat nufus internal purification it continues to all those scholars who understand that in order to reach the real good pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i have to remove from my person even if there is a smell of hypocrisy you have to remove it so i can enjoy the sincerity of my words and my actions see and if you follow a sharia and a tariqa both sides you will reach al haqiqah you know facts realities which were described by the companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that by the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the training of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have reached a status where nothing will decrease or increase our faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have reached that total satisfaction as you were taught about an nafsul ammara the internal powerful motivating that powerful motivating you know this uh, source or this force will 
incite evil in you. So you have to go for the training. Then you come to an nafsul ammara. You know, and then you reach an nafsul mutmainna finally. So that was an nafsul mutmainna means 100% you are at peace with yourself, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your purpose in your life circle around one haqiqah. What is that? That is قُلْ كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will read the status of لَا نَافِعَ وَلَا ضَارَّ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Nobody, but nobody can ever touch you with any kind of harm or hurt without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody can benefit you without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that was the functions of all the prophets and messengers to connect the humanity with their creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not with themselves they were only role models for them they translated Glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into their words and into their actions. So in order to achieve a sharia of tariqa and reach al haqiqa you have to know, you have to have idrak. That's why Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا and in many verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking. Even go to Surah Al-Qadr. Referring to the Holy Quran. This idrak means reaching the state of haqiqah. That is the real truth. The real truth about a human being and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the rest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like any other subject, you need to have your teachers. And a teacher who will teach you this kind of spirituality Hold your hand and take you to the facts as conveyed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the in the light of the glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That teacher is called Murshid, and the person who goes to it is called Murid. That you intentionally going and signing up or registering for this course. You can call him a salik, a person who walks on a path. And the process of moving into that is called a suluk. And the condition when you work on your heart by removing all the weeds from your heart you reach al-hal al-hal is that status when your heart is purified in such a way that nobody has any room in that heart other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the meaning of وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ and in order to reach that we have to understand and recognize the four kind of ma'rifah you know ma'rifah is the knowledge so first of all we have to understand Ma'rifatu that. Who am I? Why am I in this world? What is the purpose of my life? 
How am I different from the animals and all the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are also struggling to fulfill their physical needs? And the same thing, the Prophet, and we have repeatedly mentioned, Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabban. If we are able to recognize ourselves, if we are able to have the true knowledge about our existence and about our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the basis of the role of the Khalifa which was given to us to play here in this world, then you will know in reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that role has to be played in the human society by being the most kind, helpful, beneficial and productive member of the human society. So what does Islam say? How do you recognize yourself? We have many sections. Let us go as a headline. Number one is Al-Ibadat, your devotional deeds that include five pillars of Islam and every deed of righteousness. Al-Mu'amalat, your interaction with your own family, neighbor, relatives, friends and with the rest of the humanity which has to be on the basis of love and kindness and justice and fairness. Surah number 60 verse number 8. And your struggle. Tazkiyah anir radail. Your struggle to purify your internal self from all bad morals. Wa tahliyah bil fadail. And to beautify your character with all those beautiful messages which were translated into the behavior by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did he say, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِهُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Why did he say, الدِّينُ الْمُعَامَلَةِ So mu'amalat and akhlaq have two-third of Islam as a religion and one third is Al-Ibadah and you have to go in details we have already spoken about the Islamic ethical system and we have already spoken about Al-Mu'amalat I am not going to go into the details of that but only one reminder in Mu'amalat the most important thing where people are ignoring the divine message is when it comes to earning your living. See, Al-Mu'amalat include that you need to make sure that your source of income is lawful. See, and then all the other etiquettes. Etiquettes connected to your day to day life, your marriage, your earning, your business, you know, your socializing, when you are alone, when you are traveling, when you are practicing your duty of Amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. And keeping away from all that deviates you from the uh, from the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it also to include al munajjiyat The things which will rescue you. Like being a human being, I know perfection only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I was a human being, I made a mistake. I hasten to go and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and patiently persevere in my day to day life and following the gratitude and knowing that Iman is a status between Al Khawf or Raja, the fear of displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hope of good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we do that, 
then we know how are we going to tackle an nafsul ammarati bis su so brothers and sisters in islam the time is over inshallah we will continue to learn all these facts from the holy quran and from the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the first step before even practicing anything is the knowledge so once you have the knowledge you will be able to practice there is a request for dua for good health and for abundance in the sustenance for sayyida tahsina may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her her wish and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her abundant rizq and provide for her and make it easy for her, her life and may allah grant a speedy recovery to all the sick people and his maghfirah and forgiveness to all those who have passed away and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and guidance to translate whatever we are learning into our day to day behavior following the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and imitating the role model of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al ghafur ar rahim الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما امر واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ارغاما لمن جحد به وكفر واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من صلى وصح وصل على محمد وعلى ال محمد ب عدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين والصحابه اجمعين والتابعين وتابع التابعين وسلف الصالحين واولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين الى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم اجمعين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنه اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكروا اذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى واعز واجل واهم واتم واعظم واكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقم الصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا للفلا بعد قامة الصلاة بعد قامة الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله